Hi everyone, Lydia Lee here, and today I am having a conversation with a 90-day launch student, Melissa Strange, to share her experience of being part of this program and what she's accomplished so far as a first-time business owner. You know, we hear a lot of stories of um, what success looks like down the road, and sometimes we can't relate to that level of where we're at when we're starting a business. So um, I really appreciate, um, you know, Melissa coming to take her time today, generously sharing transparently what it feels like to build a business for the first time. Uh, so Melissa, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me, Lydia. <laughs> well, let's start off uh, with people knowing a little bit more about your business. So can you uh, tell us a little bit more about like who you help, what you help with, and why you're passionate and deeply interested in about what you're doing today? Yeah, sure. Um, so my business is called MKS Virtual. So I'm a, a virtual assistant. Um, and I offer small businesses and coaches in the personal and professional development um, arenas um, support in terms of um, virtual admi administration, business support. Um, I also offer them um, just assistance with their daily implementation of their tasks and projects um, and giving them that um, accountability, um, helping them to strategically plan um, and yeah, just really um, offering them valuable support. Um, so not just in terms of virtual assistance, but also being a real partner in their business as well. Mm, knowing that one of your sweet spot and one of your sort of unique values that you do as a VA, it's not just, you're not like a doer, like tell me what to do and I'll just do that thing. Like you have such a big strategic mind of being, I think you've been an executive assistant and you, you've helped yeah. such leaders in, in, in corporations to do so much beyond daily tasks, you know, that your brain of like planning for the future, simplifying the pathway for particular plans. And in a lot of ways, sometimes like causing, like making sure there's boundaries about what, where they're spending yeah. their time and energy. Like that is such a, a necessary thing, I think, for small business owners who just attempt to do it all, all the time. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's all about helping them to regain their time so they can really focus mm. on the impactful tasks that are going to make a big difference in their business. And especially for coaches, um, you know, what they do best is helping people, coaching, teaching, educating. Right. Um, so really that's their zone of genius. And if I can help them with the back end, you know, everyday tasks that are really um, overwhelming and, and weighing them down. Um, yeah, that's, that's sort of my mission. Awesome. Well, I want to talk a little bit about um, your personal story for a minute. So you have, you've never been a business owner. <laughs> I know that when we first started talking together, you're like, I'm not even sure if I'm cut out to be an entrepreneur. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, is this really for me? Um, now, obviously you've mustered up the courage so far to kind of keep going on the path and we'll yeah. talk more about that. But in, initially, like, what was your personal motivation to start a business? Yeah, I mean, my personal motivation is really um, to create an, a, a life on my terms, I suppose. Um, having worked in corporate for, for 20 years, um, I always felt that there was something missing. Um, there was that passion and drive. It was just missing for me. Um, I really enjoyed what I did, um, but I really felt like I just wanted something more and I wanted, I wanted to help people in a deeper and more meaningful way. Um, so yeah, creating that life on my terms and also creating a, a location independent lifestyle as well. Um, and a financially independent lifestyle, um, mm. is a really big motivating factor for me. Um, especially as my partner, he's from the UK and currently we're oh, okay. in um, Australia. Um, but we've both lived and worked in each other's countries. And so, yeah, creating that sustainable online business is really, um, important for us to be able to travel back and forth and, um, both be able to spend that quality time with our families and things like mm. that. So, um, yeah, that was really important um, for me in, in creating this business. And it really does keep me going, even when things seem a little scary yeah. and tough. I want to ask a little bit about, like, before you, you came on board to Nine Day Launch, there was obviously like there were maybe months or even years of like contemplating, right, about whether or not you should qu quit your job, whether or not you should start a business. Um, did you try other things? Like, did you, did you read books? Did you do other courses? Like what were some of the things that you tried doing to, to try to be an entrepreneur, but didn't necessarily yeah. sort of work out and why didn't it work yeah. out? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I tried a lot of things. I mean, it was mostly a lot of talking, journaling, dreaming about it, but 
honestly not a lot of action and that's not because I didn't want to take action it's because I, I really just didn't know how and where to start mm. um so I just found it quite overwhelming you know um I'm, I'm a big researcher and I think I almost over researched so I was you know trying to you know do a lot of different courses mini courses and things you know how to launch a business in a month and you know <laughs> just things that weren't particularly helpful um especially for, for me personally um and my personality they just didn't work for me um i did try uh, I, I did enroll in a um, virtual assistant course which was helpful in parts um but it didn't offer support or um accountability or anything like that so um the fact that i already had a lot of mindset blocks it sort of yeah it, it, it didn't really um produce the results that i was looking for in the course um, I've mm. actually learned more since I, I've stopped doing that course and just, you know, learning on the job, I suppose. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. So, um, I mean, it took me a long time to get over those mindset blocks of feeling like I needed to learn more. I needed to do more. I needed to do one more course. So, you know, um, I needed to be more of an expert in a certain area. Um, so it took me a while to realize that actually I didn't need any of those things, that I was quite ready exactly where I was. Um, and once I realized that that's when the action started to happen. So, right. um, yeah, it's, I, I, I definitely think you can over research, but, um, at the end of the day, you, you just got to start wherever you are. Totally. I mean, I just wrote a whole Instagram post about this last week about how overlearning is a form of self-sabotage. And I, I certainly have fallen trapped to that because le learning is a safe place. You haven't taken any risks. <laughs> you haven't been yeah. rejected or judged. Right. And it's, it can be an interesting place where we think we're being productive by learning more and inputting more into our brain, but nothing's changing, <laughs> you know, in our actual day-to-day -day lives of progressing towards, you know, goals that we sort of had to make. Um, I want to talk a bit about what you mentioned, you know, with these mindset blocks, right, that you've had to overcome, and I'm sure continue to be overcoming right now, right? It's not yeah. been perfect. <laughs> um, and before we get into sort of what you've achieved so far in your business, I do want to talk about this, this hurdle, right, this obstacle that I think affects every new business owner, and to be honest, affects every business owner of any stage, <laughs> because we're always sort of advancing or upgrading ourselves to the next version of business or the next courageous thing, right, we all want to do in our business. And we can always, you know, we, we can reach those blocks again, if our mindset hasn't been dealt with, you know, from the root level of certain things, and they re recur again throughout business. So what has been some of like the core mindset things that were important for you to focus on get support with and it made the difference for you when you actually you know paid attention to these these blocks that were stopping you hmm. um yeah i think it's just having that self-confidence and self-belief um mm. you know i always felt like like i said I, I didn't know enough or wasn't smart enough or couldn't you know whatever i was telling myself so it's really just um being able to talk it out with people um and i've i've had worked with um quite a few coaches over the years actually that have been helping me with that um that self-development um and it's it's an ongoing process you know i i still get scared before a call a discovery call or whatever i you know um but i'm pushing through that and i think that's the key is that you you're allowed to feel scared you know it's okay to feel scared it's okay to feel anxious that's totally normal um, but you, if you push through that, you often find that, you know, that's where that sense of accomplishment comes from. And I've done so many things this past few months that I, I never thought that I would have the courage to do. Right. Um, so it, yeah, it's, um, it's really just dealing with those feelings and allowing them to be there, you know, allowing that anxiety to, to sit with mm. you, but don't let it paralyze you. Um, yeah, so it used to keep me in in an inaction and procrastination, but now it's like, okay, I acknowledge that you're there, but I'm not going to let you stop me. Um, so yeah. that's kind of the mindset that I'm I'm taking with it. Yeah, 
I like that you you didn't try to just like ignore or pretend that you're not anxious <laughs> and not afraid yeah. because I think that ignoring part makes it worse, doesn't it? You know, when yeah. uh, we pretend to be brave or we're like, we should be brave. And so we get really hard on ourselves when we're shaking a little bit, one before we get on a sales <laughs> call or even, you know, what you told me before coming on this interview. It's like, oh my God, video. I never get on video <laughs> and this is scary. It's terrifying. And totally, terrifying. <laughs> totally. I mean, I was shaking it. I took 25 takes of my first video the first time I did a YouTube video. And funny enough, before I did that YouTube video, um, I got into a massive scooter accident trying to get to my location spot to film the perfect video. And the universe was like, nope, you're not going there today after you've contemplated for three weeks of the perfect spot. And it completely, you know, like just took my plan out of the mix. But um, I think perfectionism, you know, wanting to feel 100% confident is everyone's um, thing, you know, to, to feel that they're allowed to move forward. But I'm so glad that you said, you know what, you're, you're, it's okay. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to know that you're doing something for the first time that you've never done before. And you're a little sweaty at the moment, you know, that it's a bit scary, but the difference is you're not allowing that state of mind to keep you stuck where you can go, all right, I might have a little cry about this after, or I might have a little nervous sort of thing when I show up, <laughs> but at least I did it. At least I, you know, yeah. keep moving forward, which I think it, that itself is a great win. That's itself is progress, right? Um, so as you know, Melissa, one of the big ingredients of what I repeat like a broken record <laughs> at the 90 day launch community is about imperfect action, right? Like yes. that's, I mean, you can get it as a concept and then you, you've also gotten it to the next level because when you took imperfect action, I think you embrace that new, that concept in a much deeper way. Right. Um, yes. so one of the, really cool wins and you've had multiple wins throughout this program and what i want to also mention is that a lot of these wins happen before you even finished <laughs> the program like you're not even on the last module right and so that's really interesting to talk about because i think again with perfectionism people believe that they have to finish all the courses do you know everything from a to z completely perfectly get the website launch get my photographs up like all the glitzy stuff to make ourselves feel like a business owner but you've kind of done the opposite where you're like, no, I'm working on my mindset. I'm working on my foundations. I'm putting myself out there even before I have things like a website up. Right. So I yeah. want you to kind of talk us through like, what were some of the key things, you know, cause you've got some paid clients, you started, I mean, you don't have a website today either. And that hasn't stopped you from pitching and getting sales and, you know, doing discovery calls and getting clients. What were some of the non obvious things <laughs> like website, you know, and all those things that you didn't have to use. What did you do instead that were sort of worked for you in terms of getting clients, getting, you know, being able to pitch your services and start working with people without an official launch mm -hmm. of a brand and a business? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess because I'm still going through the course and I, I mean, I'm only just over halfway through. Um, That's right. So, I didn't feel ready and I still don't feel ready for a website. And I, I'm realizing now that you don't have to, you know, there's no rules to say you have to have a website. Mm. So um, that's definitely been liberating to know that I can create whatever I want to create. Like I can, you know, it's up to me. I, I'm, you know, the buck stops with me basically. So, <laughs> right. um, I can, I can decide what I do and what I don't want to do um, according to how I feel. Um, so social media has been another one for me that I sort of have a bit of a love-hate relationship with social media, mm. but I know that it's a necessary evil at this stage in my business. Um, so I've really learned to use it in a more strategic way um, that is aligned with my personality. So being an introvert, um, you know, it was very daunting at first putting myself out there, um, talking about myself and, you know, feeling like I was selling because I, I never want to do that. I just don't feel like that's that's who I am um, but what I have done um, is joined a few um, social, uh, Facebook groups that I can really um, align with and um, I feel comfortable in and I feel comfortable sharing in um, and through that just engaging you know maybe two to three times a week I've really been able to build some relationships um, and you know build a little bit of awareness um, so without having to direct people to a website or anything it's really just about that um, relationship developing um, and yeah I've, I've had a fair few leads that way um, and actually um, 
got a client that way as well. So it's, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a learning process, but um, it, it's something that feels, it feels like the right way to me um, rather than just pitching my services to whoever will listen. It's yeah, yeah. just really focusing on, on those relationships. Yeah. I, for you, authenticity and real genuine connection was a pretty big mm. deal for you, right? Like that's why sales, like, you know, direct yeah. sales or sort of aggress- aggressive sales is not your style, you know? And so you had sort of a more human approach. And I think um, not only just Facebook groups, but I remember like you attending an event, you know, in Australia where you found one of your first clients that way. And then she referred you to another, you know, like there's your marketing mode is actually relationships, you know, which people always forget is a strategy. (laughs) It's actually probably the most powerful strategy as a new business owner. And even for me as an eight-year business, like my relationships are, I would say my backbone, you know, is my fundamentals, like of allowing me to gain traction in all sorts of ways, you know, whether it's um, being on, on a platform, you know, of an audience that I've been introduced to or referrals of clients. And I think word of mouth referrals, um, genuine calls, right. And just helping people generously, which is what you've done in the groups, like just help people without the condition of that. They have to be a client, (laughs) you know, and that, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, and then you get to practice your skills as well, which is a a nice double whammy in a positive way. (laughs) If you were to describe like the experience you've had so far at 90 Day Launch, you know, what was sort of the most valuable things about this program that supported you in sort of going from idea to launch? What, how would you describe those values uh, in, in this experience? Yeah, I mean, 90 Day Launch has been amazing. Um, just to give me that confidence and clarity in the direction that I'm going and really having a framework to follow but without that framework being rigid and, and strict, you know, you must do this, this, and this, and this order. Um, I love that the framework allows for so much flexibility and movement. So, um, you know, like you said, I, I got my first client um, before I was even halfway through the course. So I kind of jumped ahead a few steps and then I had to come back and sort of finish off what I'd started. So, right. and that's fine, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, there's no, like I said, there's no rules, um, but yeah, that it's really helpful because um, I often struggle with knowing where to focus my energy and attention. So, you know, if I ever am not sure, I can refer back to the framework and, oh, okay, mm. this, this is where I'm at. This is, you know, what I should be focusing on right now. Um, so, yeah, the other thing I think um, has been amazing about the program is just that sense of community and being on this journey with other like-minded people who are all working towards a similar goal, Um, we're all there to support each other and cheer each other on and um, provide feedback so that's just been so beautiful to have um, to have that because it it can be a really lonely place um, as I'm sure you Mm. you probably know yourself you know building a business on your own you know there's nobody to talk to Um, so yeah that online community has been um, fantastic for me Um, Mm. but also being able to get like that personalized coaching from you Lydia um, you know we're all at different stages and and dealing with different problems at different times so to have that coaching to be so personalized to to whatever is going on um, in our our world at the time is um, just so valuable as well yeah Mm. Well, thank you so much for saying that. I mean, I, I definitely am not like when I think thought about creating a course, I just was like, that's not enough because people just can't have information. They need, um, they need support, you know, they need community, they need accountability and personalized strategy. There is no one size fits all if we, as we've all discovered with our personality types and what we want, yeah. you know, and every business has looked so different, <laughs> you know, from each other's like in the community. And um, I'm so thankful for people like you that have contributed like such a, what I call call this collective intelligence of, you know, you're great with systems and organization and sort of simplifying workload, you know, and thinking about self-care and all that stuff. And then someone else, like, you know, other students like Lee, who is a behavior design specialist, you know, she'll think more about mindset and tiny habits. And, you know, it's, it's such a great combination of a business council. So instead of being at the office and going, all right, I need someone to help me with a project. It's like, okay, we're all business owners, but we come with different skill sets that we can lend a hand to each other. And then, together we're actually a much stronger unit rather than trying to 
be the Swiss army knife of like every skill set you need, right, in a business. So I'm, I'm really glad that you find value in that piece as well. Um, well, yeah. thank you so much for coming here and sharing your story. Um, and I would love to, um, you know, for people who are, are loving what you're saying about, you know, simplifying a business, getting more time back with their business. Let's say they are starting a business or have started a business where um, things have gotten out of hand <laughs> and they're no, and they're working way too much. They've lost sight of the whole point of having a business and they might need someone like you who is kind of, you know, acts like a secret weapon or a right-hand woman for their business. Um, where, where can people find you to kind of connect with you, maybe learn more about what you do, um, you know, where, where would we direct them to? Well, you can find me on Instagram um, at MKS Virtual or um, also Facebook as well. Um, and yeah, that's probably the best place to go. I share some little tips and um, organization tricks and things like that. Um, but yeah, feel free to, to reach out, DM me. Um, I'd be happy to chat about um, how I can support you. Um, but yeah, I, I love to support um female um, small business owners and coaches um, and especially in that personal um, and professional development space it's something that I'm so passionate about and I'm so excited to be able to work um, on a deeper level with those sort of business owners to really um, allow them like I said earlier to do what they do best because mm. you know I've seen firsthand the transformational work that they do and it, it can change people's lives like it's absolutely amazing and so, you know, the more time that they spend doing those things that they love, um, the better the world's going to be as far as I'm concerned. So, it, you know, the more support I can provide to small business owners, um, the better. <laughs> I love that. And it's so good that you have a deep interest in the self-development world because that just makes you so much more in tune with what that business needs, right? And uh, you being an audience type, you being an actual client of theirs or you could have been a client of theirs kind of adds that extra element of um, just understanding of a business, which I, which I really love that you've matched a passion that you have with actually, you know, targeting the people that are in that niche, which makes it a little more joyful to work with clients like that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on uh, on board and sharing your story. And again, we'll put the links uh, on uh, the page for Melissa so you can um, ping her on Instagram, DM her, uh, see her on Facebook. She gives some wonderful tips about mindset and organization and just thinking more systematically about your small business. Um, and she is a gem. So I hope you connect with her. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us today. 